atmosphere is set for blessings. The atmosphere is set for miracles. And whatever your need is, God told me to tell you, it's already released. There's a blessing in the room today. Are you ready? Get ready. It's already been released. Anybody believe that? Come on, y'all say there's a Agape, thank you for joining us again for virtual worship. I'm thankful for God's many blessings upon our lives, and I just believe that in spite of what we're going through, that the best is still yet to come. I'm excited for the word this morning for you, for receiving the word, for what God wants to impart into your lives. Let's pray. Eternal God, we are so grateful for your word this morning. We thank you for your many blessings for this is another day's journey and we're glad about it. God, we pray now that your word will fall fresh upon us so that we will be fed and that we will not go hungry uh, for your everlasting word. Thank you for what's getting ready to happen in each of our lives. In Jesus name we pray and all of God's people said, amen. Turn with me this morning to the book of John, John's gospel, 
We're going to be looking at John's Gospel, 6th chapter, beginning with the third verse. Uh, we're reading from the, His, uh, the Holman Christian Standard Bible. So Jesus went up a mountain and sat down there with his disciples. Now the Passover, a Jewish festival, was near. Therefore, when Jesus looked up and noticed a huge crowd coming toward him, he asked Philip, where will we buy bread so that these people can eat? He asked this to test him, for he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered, 200 denier worth of bread wouldn't be enough for each of them to have a little. One of his disciples, Andrew Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There's a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what are they for so many? Then Jesus said, Have the people sit down. There was plenty of grass in that place, so they sat down. The men numbered about 5,000. Then Jesus took the loaves, and after giving thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated, so also with the fish, as much as they wanted. When they were full, he told his disciples, collect the leftovers so that nothing is wasted. So they collected then and filled 12 baskets with the pieces from the five barley loaves that were left over by those who had eaten. Here's what I want to talk about this morning. Giving Jesus what you have. Giving Jesus what you have. One of the things I think we encounter in our lives is that sometimes people are insecure about who they are and what they are. They're, they're, they, they have come to an indecision. They're, they're, they're indecisive about whether or not what they have to offer is worthy enough. Maybe, maybe they, they, they feel that because of my background, because of where I'm coming from, I'm not worthy. God can't use me. I, I, I remember sometimes, uh, sometime uh, way back in my, my, my growing, folks would say, uh, I would come to church, but I'm not coming until I get myself together. Or they would come and, and just sit because they, they would be made to feel as if they're not worthy enough of God using them for the kingdom. Oh, I want to submit this morning. I want to submit this morning to you that every one of us, every one of us is unique. Every one of us has been designed uh, for kingdom building. And I'm here to tell you, uh, whatever you have, God can take it and use it for the blessings of the kingdom. Oh, yeah, that is very, it's, it's a very sad point in, in our Christian lives when there are some who think they're not worthy in it. And so what happens, they just sit in the church. They sit in the pew. They sit in the chair and, and they listen and partake, but they never offer anything else up not because they don't have it, but because they are uh, in, in, insecure. They're not secure in what they feel. They're indecisive about who they are and what they are and what they have to offer because they think everything in the church, in God's kingdom, has to be something big. Oh, I grew up in a time where, where folks, if they had some education, which was uh, advanced education, uh, some folks thought they were better than everybody else. Or if they had a, a, a higher paying position at a, at, in a job and, and you didn't have that position, uh, sometimes they would make, make you feel as if you were small. Oh, yeah, yeah, yes, yes. I'm talking what's in God's church, not in the street. There's sometimes that we've made people feel small because they didn't have a look or they didn't drive a certain thing or they didn't live a certain place or they didn't wear certain type of garments. Uh, we made them seem small. 
And, and, but I'm here to tell you that God, God takes everybody. God uses everybody. And the great thing about God's kingdom, there's no, as old folks, no big eyes, no little use. Everybody's equal. Everybody's equal in the sight of God. In fact, if you have more than somebody else, the scripture says, much is given, much is required. And so here in, in, in our text this morning, uh, Jesus had been preaching and, and now he has finished his teaching and he has gone over to cross the river, gone into the mountainside and all of the folks, thousands of folks who had come out to hear him and to follow his steps now have not dispersed to go home, but they're still following him. They are still following him. There's something about when Jesus is near that folks gravitate. Folks don't want to leave. And so they had listened to him all through the day teaching. And now Jesus was tired. He had crossed over and he's sitting, trying to rest. And lo and behold, the multitude is still following him. They're crossing the river. However they need to get to where he is, they have followed him. And now Jesus has moved and realizes I've got to feed these folks. These folks need to eat. These folks have been with me all day long. Isn't it unique? Isn't it something how Jesus not only is concerned about our spiritual, but he's also concerned about our physical. Jesus could have just told him, go on home, go, go, go home, go home. I'm done for the day. I'll see you on, on tomorrow. But he, he doesn't do that. He's concerned and he wants to meet needs. And I'm glad this morning that Jesus is about meeting needs. He wants to meet your needs. He wants to meet your needs where you are right now if you are available. He wants to meet your needs. And I'm here to tell you, when you follow Jesus, Jesus is concerned about you. He's concerned. So let's get into the text this morning about giving what you have, giving it all to Jesus, turning it over to the master. Here's the first point I've looked at. Uh, he followed. This lad followed Jesus. He followed him. That's the first point by giving, giving what you have is to follow him. This lad has followed Jesus through his day, putting him in a unique position to be a vessel. Now, this young man did not go, this lad, this child did not leave the house thinking, I'm going to be a vessel, but, but I'm going to follow him. I want to listen to Jesus. I want to hear what he's talking about. And I'm following the crowd. And that's the key. If, if you want Jesus, you desire Jesus to take what you have and use it for the betterment of the kingdom of God, you've got to start following him. Oh, beloved, you, you cannot expect God to, to, to manifest his blessings through your life if you're not willing to follow him. This lad followed him in the heat of the day. He followed him. Now, obviously, his, his, his mother realized if he's going to be out with Jesus, maybe she came with him. She said, I've got to fix him something to eat because being out here all day long, he is going to get hungry. So I'm going to pack him a lunch. So that at least he can have something to keep him going until dinner time. Oh, the key, the key here, my beloved, is, is that, that, that we've got to learn how to follow him undeniably daily. He took his little lunch and he was on his way to follow Jesus. Oh, yeah, if you want to, you want to get to a point of giving him what you have and all you have, you got to be in the process of following him. You got to be into a daily routine of following Christ. I, I want I want to help you this morning. You cannot expect God to use you if, unless you follow him. If you don't follow him, God will not use you. He will not use what you have to offer. And I'm here to tell you, God can take anything you have. He can take the littleness in your mind, the little bit that you think you have, and turn it into a blessing if you are committed in following him. And that's the key that we have to deal with. You cannot expect God to take what you have every now and then, and then you not be completely committed to him. 
you, you got to be committed. He has followed him. He stayed with him and followed him. And I'm wondering this morning, how many of you have stayed with him nonstop? When, when it was good days, you followed him, you stayed with him. But when the bad days came, did you stay with him? Did you keep following him? When things got tight, did you keep following him? Let me drop this. Let me drop this. When, when your money was tight, were you still tithing? When your energy was low, were you still giving him your talent? When, when you were too tired to do anything in your time, everything was bundled up and you would run out of one place, run to another place, doing this, doing, did you still give him your time? That's the key. That's about following him and denominably, I'm going to follow you no matter what, no matter how much of the heat of the day I'm in, I'm still going to follow you. Well, so, so the first thing in about giving stuff is about following. You gotta follow. He followed him. Here's the second thing I, I pulled out of the text this morning. They submitted, he and everybody else submitted to Jesus. Let me share this. Look at verse 9. Jesus is asked the question: How are we gonna feed these people? He, he knew what he was doing. This was the chat. He said, Philip says, there's a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. But what are they for so many? There's a boy here who has five barley loaves. What are they for so many? Look, look. This boy offered what he had and all he had. Jesus, the, the folks are there. They're listening. Obviously, this boy heard you. What are we going to do to feed these people? And they said, look, 200 denarii. What we have is not enough. He offered what he had and all he had. The thought process, listen, listen, the thought process to this. I look at my lunch. This little boy looked at his lunch. Five barley loaves, five little biscuits, two fish, probably the size of, of, of a king sardine. He didn't get caught up in the amount of what he had, but his face was, I will share what I have. Oh, I need somebody to help me this morning. I need somebody to begin to look at themselves. It's not the amount you have. It's the attitude in what you give. That's, that's, that's it. Whatever I have, I'm willing to give it to Jesus and let Jesus do what he needs to do. Look, look, he had this kind of faith. Isn't it amazing how children have this type of faith, this unblinding faith that they're willing to do because they just believe? Do you realize, beloved, sometimes we hinder the miracles and blessings of God because we evaluate what we're giving? Oh, yeah, we, we're looking. Now, if I have a lot, now, I know God can use it. But if I have a little, I'm not sure God can use it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's not enough. That's not enough. Do you realize God takes what we have? God takes the little of what we have. But, but, but because we give it in type with the faith that we need to have, the belief that it, that God can take anything and make something out of it. The reason why I know God can do it because he took me a nothing and made me into a little something. He took you and made you into a blessing for the kingdom of God. It is no secret what God can do. What he's done for others, he'll do the same for you. Oh yeah, God God takes nothing. He takes little bit. Oh yeah, that's really how, when I look back over my life, beloved, I realized I had enough faith to look at my messed up situation and step into the line of faith and say, God, I'm yours. I'm completely yours. Well, how many of you, how many of you listening this morning, watching this morning, realize, look at your life and say, when I came to Christ, I was in nothing. I came to Christ just as I was, weary, weak, worn. But I found a resting place, and he has made me glad. Oh, yeah, think about that. 
When we came to Christ, all we had was this little lunch. And we trusted God. Oh, yeah. And so what happens here, what happens here is that we, we get caught up in evaluating what we are giving. Instead of looking at the, the, the quantity, look at the quality. I may not be much in your eyes, but I'd look good in God's eyes. And so he, he found, so they had to submit. They had to submit. They had to submit. Look, they had to submit. They submitted to Jesus. That's the key. They submitted to Jesus. And if you want Jesus to move in your life, if you want to be a part of a blessing and be a part of how God works through you to be a blessing, you've got to learn to submit. So first, you've got to follow him. And if you follow him, you've got to submit to him. You've got to submit to God. And so in giving it all, he had to he had to follow God. And then they had to submit. He he submitted his lunch. He gave up what he had so that maybe others could be blessed. Oh my God, my God, my God. Now let's here, here's 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 the third thing I found out in this text. Not only did they, he follow Jesus, not only did he submit. They focused on Jesus. They, they focused on Jesus. Look, look what happens. Look what happens. Then Jesus said, have the people sit down. There was plenty of grass in that place, so they sat down. The men numbered about 5,000. Then Jesus took the loaves, and after giving thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated, so also with the fish, as much as they wanted. Oh, yeah. oh my God, my God, my God. Let me go back here real quick. Look, look, look. They focused. They focused on Jesus. They focused on Jesus. Look, look. They're at a point and we come to this point that when we're standing on the brink of a breakthrough, that we have to realize we've got to focus on Jesus. Oh yeah, look, look, they're hungry. They don't see a, 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 a food truck, a food chariot coming. There's no picnic baskets that, that the disciples have been carrying so that they could feed the people. The people are hungry. And so Jesus takes the lunch. Let me go back here. Let me go back here. He takes this lunch and he says, tell the people to sit down. Tell them to sit down because it's plenty of grass. Look, look here, the process. We're talking about a process. They followed the instructions. They followed the instructions. That's the key. You got to learn to follow the instructions. You, you got to follow the instructions. There's a process of how J Jesus operated. Jesus gave thanks first. Oh, oh, oh my God. Oh my God. Even over this small last love, he gave thanks. And I'm here to tell you, when you want God to move, you want God to use what you have and use you to be a blessing to others, you've got to understand uh, Jesus is going to give some thanks over you. There's, there's some thanks. He, he, he placed it. He placed his hands. He distributed to those after he gave things. Whenever Jesus gives thanks over you, you don't have to work. God's going to get ready to do something with your life. He's getting ready to do something. He put, he laid his hands on what the lad had given. Don't you realize that's how God manifests his blessings? That's how God makes things happen. He puts his hands on it. 
Oh, when the anointing of God comes on it, God has given thanks for it. God puts his hands on it. That's when things get ready to happen. That's when things are happening. Oh, I thank God because he lays, when God lays his hands on you, when you submit your life to Christ, when you submit your life to God and you let God lay his hands and pray on you, give thanks for you coming, God begins to open up doors and windows that have been closed in your faith. That's when God begins to move. That's when you begin to see the blessings of God begin to manifest themselves in your life. Oh yeah, maybe some of you have been living long enough to see what God has done. God can take a little and make a lot. Why? Because you submitted it to him. You followed the process and God laid his hands on it. He spoke over it and things began to happen. Oh yeah, you got to follow. There's a process, beloved. There's a process and you've got to follow the instructions. It's like getting getting something in and you put it together and they send the instructions, but you don't follow the instructions. I used to do that growing up. You get a bike and you try to put the bike together, especially at Christmas time, and you're putting everything together and everything looks together. And then what happens? You got a bag full of stuff and you say, oh, they must have sent something extra. No, the key was you didn't follow the, ho oh, oh, watch out, the instructions. There's a process. Uh, Grandmama used to say this, there is no shortcut to glory. Oh yeah, you've got to follow the instruction. Jesus took what that lad had given up. He gave instruction for folks to sit down. He told the disciples, tell them to sit down in the grass. He gave thanks. Now notice here, notice here. This wasn't at the daycare. There were 5,000 men, and that's not counting the women and children. There's what they call a multitude. There's a multitude. So the process follows. Let me, let me move into this next thing. Look at this. He distributed them to those who received it, so also with the fish. And look what happens. They get to eat. They ate until they were full. Oh yeah, look, that's what I said. Jesus took the loaves and after giving thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated. So also with the fish and they, as much as they want. Do you realize God didn't have a limit on his blessings? Oh no, 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 no. There is not a limit. Look what he did. He fed them and look, it wasn't a, a quick, okay, that's all you get. You got to go. You had your share. They ate as much as they wanted. Oh, that's, that's how God's blessings are. God, God blesses you until you're overflowing. Oh, yeah, there are many of you right now, you're, you, you've been blessed so much as old folks said, you're drinking from the saucer because your cup is overflowing. You're drinking from the saucer. God does not put a limit on his goodness. God does not put a limit on his blessing. When God blesses you, he blesses you. That's what scripture says. Look, they ate as much as they wanted. They kept eating until they were full. Oh, here's, 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 here's the fourth thing I want to share. They found favor in Jesus. They found favor in Jesus. Look what the text says. When they were full, he told his disciples, collect the leftovers so that nothing is wasted. So they collected then and filled 12 baskets with the pieces from the five barley loaves that were left over by those who had eaten. Oh, no, no, look at this. Look at this now. There, there's two things to pull out at what God does when, when you give him all. First, first, he made it possible that they ate as much as they want. That's favor. That's favor. Look, let me go back here. That's, that's favor. Look. Favor found in Jesus. Oh yeah, you can find you're gonna find some favor in Jesus. Find favor. Can I tell you? I know this 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 statement is not correct. Favor ain't fair. F favor doesn't doesn't have a, a process that says well only these people are here. Favor to some to the natural eye is not fair. 
because favor falls upon the just and the, not the just and the, but favor falls on those who may be less fortunate in your eyes. Look, look, the favors people ate until they were full. That's how good God is. That's, that's how he operates. He, 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 he blesses you until you're overflowing. And then here's the key that, that really just blew my mind. God doesn't waste. He picked up the leftover fragment so nothing would be lost. Somebody gonna check, somebody gonna get that in a minute. Not only did he provide favor for overfilling and, and, and overfilling my, 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 my storage or blessing me so that it is overflowing blessing, but then God doesn't waste what he does. He said there were leftover fragments. And now look, they went around picking up the leftovers. And they filled 12 baskets. But now this would never have happened if there wasn't someone who says, I've given him the little bit that I have. Do you realize maybe you're at the brink of holding out some blessings simply because you don't think you're worthy enough or what you have to offer in your mind is not good enough? Oh, yeah. God, God, I, I've been trying to teach folks for over 20 plus years, 40 years, that, that what you have, if you just give him your little lunch, give him what you have, and trust God that God will take what you give because you're giving it in the right attitude, and God will manifest it into blessings to meet people all around you. Do you realize that maybe you're 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 that 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 one thing that is needed to take something to the next level? Oh yeah, simply because of what you have to offer. It is not your decision to 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 tell God whether or not it can be used or if you're worthy. That's God's ability to take what you're offering. That's all I'm saying. Give him who you are, what you are, and let God do it. God can take nothing. I've told you this before. He can take nothing and make something because he took me. And if he can do it for me, he can do it for you. So I'm here. I'm submitting to you this morning. Give him what you have. Give God what you have. And let God do what he wants to do. You have a purpose. God has a purpose. And all it's taking, all that you're lacking is the faith. The faith to believe that I'm worthy of what God wants to do. God wants to take what you have. Give him your lunch this morning. That's, that's, all, that's what I'm going to leave with. Give him your lunch. And I'm here to ask, to ask, what happens when you give your lunch to Jesus? Well, when you give your lunch to Jesus, Jesus takes your lunch and takes it, blesses it, puts his hand and blesses multitudes all around. You can become a part of, and a participant in the miracles of God. Oh, thank God for you, beloved. Thank God for you. Thank, thank God for you tuning in. And I'm praying that what God has, has deposited in your life will be a blessing. And I'm praying that you get to the point, if you have not gotten there, to realize, give him what you have. And God will manifest it into blessings for others. But you got to follow him. Following him is getting, being in the right position. It's submitting what you have, having the faith to know that God would do just what he said he would do. There are things that, that only God can do that our mind cannot comprehend how God does what he does. But what I do know that God did it. God did it. There are things that God has done in my life because I submitted to his will that only thing, the only thing I can say is God did it. I can't figure it out. I'd stop trying to figure it out. All I can say is God did it. I want you to be able to experience what God is doing. By you. He wants to use what you have. If you will submit it and have the faith. Stop putting God into a criteria. Stop putting limits on what God can do. And trust God. That's it. Trust God. Don't put limits on God. Trust God. 
And if you do that, beloved, God will bless you and you'll become a blessing to others. Again, I thank God for you. If you're someone who is watching this morning and you've been divinely connected with us and you're trying to figure out how do I make the change, Pastor Witt? How do I make this change? Well, it, it's not that hard. It really isn't. It's first to, to admit that I am a sinner. You gotta admit and just tell yourself, I am a sinner, not saved by grace. God, I, I, I know that I'm on my way to hell if I die tonight. So I wanna make a change. John 3, 16 says, Behold, I stand at the door. No, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And then he says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hears my voice, opens the door, I will come into him. That's Revelation 3 and 20. It's simply to acknowledge that Jesus is the Son of God, that he died for your sins and you're inviting Christ and God to come into your life. Will you come into my life? At that moment, he comes. Our, our address will come across so that you can contact us. Send me an email. I'll get back with you. We'll call, we'll talk, we'll pray. And we'll get you on this new journey, this new, this new adventure, your new destiny. God bless you. God keep you. Thank God for all the essential workers again for all that you do no matter what you do as an essential worker we praise God for you let me share this with you family of course I, I want you to consider getting the vaccine that that is vital it's vital trust me follow me as I've, I have I have as I have followed Christ get that vaccine get that vaccine it's important that we get the vaccine so we can start coming back together. And so what I, I wanna kinda look at, and I'll give you a, a, a heads up, I'm looking hopefully in June to getting back to parking lot service. Uh, so we can get back together. I would say May, but I have allergies and me and the pollen don't get along. So I can't be out there like that. Uh, but hopefully in June, I'm, I'm looking at June, that we can come back together in the parking lot and then uh, we can move from there. So the more that you do, the more people who get vaccines, as, as our numbers go up, then we can be looking at making that that, that wonderful step back into the sanctuary. Uh, but I want to start out in the parking lot and, and we'll see what happens from there. Uh, but I, I want you to just share, share online that you've got the vaccine. I know uh, you're able to share on YouTube and Facebook comments, just, 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 just put out there as, as part of our service from now. On, I've got the vaccine. I've got my, I've got my shots, and that lets me know the number of people who are doing that. Uh, if not, you know, we have to make other arrangements when we get back together because I don't want people getting sick. Okay, so I, I'm listening to God, and thank God that you're listening to me, following me as your pastor. Uh, but I, I really need you to consider that. Love yourself enough and love others around you to be vaccinated. God bless you. My wife sends her love to you. We love you. We miss seeing you face to face, but I see you through your spirit. I feel your presence. Thank God for you. Hey, tune in with us on uh, Monday, early Monday morning prayer or uh, call the prayer line. It's 24 hours a day just to get the prayer. Thank God for those who tune in on Sunday morning for Sunday school, those who tune in on Tuesday. Uh, for the uh, Noonday Bible Study. And thank God for all of you tuning in on Wednesday for the Word on Wednesday, as well as tuning in on Sundays or throughout the week uh, to get the messages and the teachings. God love you. We praise God for you. We thank God for you. God, we thank you now for this time. We thank you for the hearts that have been moved and touched. God bless us and keep us and protect us. Now may the grace of God bless you and keep you. May God lift up his countenance upon you, give you peace both now and forevermore, that every heart say amen. God bless you. I love you. We'll see you soon. Hey, be a blessed, be blessed and be a blessing to others. Jesus, whoever's listening, please 
cover them today, I pray. Jesus, whoever's watching, please protect them along the way. Wherever they go, please go with them. And let your grace and mercy follow them. I pray for favor, unusual favor and healing, supernatural healing and blessing. God did it. Amen.